Today I'm going to be going over a scene between Arcadena and Triplef from The Seagull. Uh, my focus today is going to be to kind of start off slow, just going to get a feel of where the first natural instinct um, from my two actors is as far as the scene goes, where their motivations, where they feel led, knowing you know the overall arc of the play, and then to kind of guide them from there gently, start off slowly, some general blocking notes, stop and go as we go. Um, if anything large stands out to me, um, to point it out and work that. But then to really get um, stop and go as we go, I like to, as the actors are in the moment, if I see something that's off or have a question about motivation or the way something was said, to stop them in that moment instead of waiting for notes at the end, although there is a time for that style of directing, and just kind of correct it as we go to kind of ingrain it and then after doing a couple stop and goes of each run of the rehearsal, we'll stop and rework the scene all together to get a feel for it. But that's my goal today, is to really uh, question the motivations of the actors um, in a stop and go fashion throughout the scenes. So in this scene between our Cadena and Treplif, um, Valerie, tell me a little bit about what your first instinct is with her in this scene. Uh, I think the first instinct, I mean, she knows what her son just tried to do. So I think part of her wants to overcompensate almost at being a mother, but still remembering who she is to the core as a person and just kind of goes back and forth on it. Mm -hmm. It's like a struggle for her. Mm -hmm. Kind of fighting against her, her desires to be this famous theater actress that she's renowned for, but also this motherhood that she denies. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Vince? Um, I mean, obviously what he just tried to do, I feel like he's totally using that classic, like, shout out just for, like, attention type mm -hmm. of thing. And so this, this whole scene, I feel like he's playing that game of just trying to gain that mother's um, adoration that he hasn't ever really had from her. Mm -hmm. And uh, also playing that other game he's playing of trying to get rid of this guy of trying he's like I he doesn't like this guy so mm -hmm. why is she she cares about that guy more than me so you know type of thing so mm -hmm. it's like trying to, to kind of almost uh, use what just happened to him to kind of change that agreed no I like that I like that motivation let's make sure to not make that the focus though I like your first instinct of just you are. You're trying to win this motherly affection from her. So I would say make that about the first half of the scene. Okay. That is your focus. Don't let Trigorin, your like, hatred for her lover, essentially, who is also your competitor in the writing world, don't let that come into play until you bring him up okay. partway through. Then let that kind of shift into what you're playing off of. Uh, okay. okay, great. All right, let's get into it. Please change my bandage for me, Mother. You do it so gently. The doctor is late. Yes. He said he was going to be here at nine, and it's noon already. Sit down. You look as if you had a turban on. A stranger that was in the kitchen yesterday asked to what nationality you belonged. The wound is almost healed. Revel in that kiss along the lines. Just your people on the You won't be up to any more of these silly tricks, will you? When I'm gone? No, Mother. I, I did that in a moment of insane despair when I had lost all control of myself. It will never happen again. Your touch is molded. I remember when you used to act at the State Theater long ago when I was still just a chap. There was a, a fight one day in our courtyard. Um, oh, yeah, there was a fight. A poor washerwoman was almost beaten to death, and she was lifted up unconscious, and you nursed her until she was well again, and bathed her children in the wash tubs. Have you forgotten that? Events. Yeah. Why are you telling me the story? Um, just now, I feel like he's 
as I was reading it just now, mm -hmm. he's kind of like, um, like you do have compassion. Like, mm -hmm. can I have more of it? I've seen you do it, type of thing. Mm -hmm. so is that? Yeah, bring bring that out a little okay. bit more because okay. I saw some of it playing through that I like to see done more. Let's take it back just from that little story. Got it. Your touch is golden. I remember when you were uh, still acting at the State Theater long ago, when I was still just a chap. There was a fight one day in our court, and a poor washerwoman was almost beaten to death. She was picked up unconscious. What? A poor washerwoman. Okay. Your mother is rich and a famed actress. Mm, okay. And she was putting herself down to help a poor uh, washerwoman and her children. Good, okay, cool. Just get that a little bit more. Yeah. There was a fight out in our court. A poor washerwoman was almost beaten to death. She was picked up unconscious, and you nursed her back to health and bathed her children in the wash tubs. Have you forgotten that? Yes, entirely. Good job on the fence. I like the changes. It's more honest, less expositional. Two ballet dancers lived in the same house and used to come drink coffee with you. I remember that. They were very pious. I love you again, Mother. These last few days, as tenderly and trustingly as I did when I was a child. Thank God a little bit more tender. I love you again, Mother. As tenderly and trustingly as I did when I was a child. These, uh, sorry. Okay, I would actually, I want to move on. You guys have been sitting for a yeah. while. That seems like a good moment for you to get up and, and go to her physically as much as you are with your words right now. Okay, Why okay. Why you words? Let's make that physical. Cool, okay. They were very pious. I love you again. These last few days. Okay, Okay, real quick. Just oh, okay. a technical point. Let's go around. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, we'll <laughs> I love you again. These last few days, as tenderly and trustingly as I did when I was a child, I have no one left to me but you. But why? Why? Get angry. But you. But why? Why do you let yourself be controlled by that man? You don't understand him, Constantine. He has a wonderfully noble personality. Nevertheless, when he has been told that I wish to challenge him to a duel, and his nobility does not prevent him from playing the coward, <laughs> he is about to beat and knock in this retreat. Nonsense. I've asked him myself to go. A noble personality indeed. Here we are almost quarreling over him, and he probably is in the garden laughing at us at this very moment. Or else enlightening Nina's mind and trying to persuade her into thinking him a man of genius. Nice, Beth. Let's pause right there real quick. I like what you're doing with that that I haven't seen before, that you're almost jabbing at her with the fact that her lover is off pursuing somebody else. Yeah. I really, really like that. Let's look that in, but let's take it back to the beginning to kind of rehash some of those moments we're working through. Sure. Okay. okay, so let's take it from the top. Please change my bandage for me, Mother. Right. You do it so gently. Doctor is late. Yes, he said he would be arriving at nine, and it's past noon already. Sit down. You look as if you had a turban on. Someone just yesterday in the kitchen asked to what nationality you belonged. <laughs> Your wound is almost healed.
You won't be up to any more of these silly tricks, will you, when I'm gone? No, Mother. I did that in a moment of insane despair when I had lost all control over myself. It will never happen again. Your touch is golden. I remember when you used to act at the State Theater. When I was just a young chap. One day there was a fight in our court. And a poor washerwoman was almost beaten to death. She was picked up unconscious. But you nursed her back to health, bathed her children in the wash tubs. Do you remember that? Uh, no, not at all. Two ballet dancers lived in the same house, and they used to come and drink coffee with you. I remember that. They were very pious. I love you again, Mother as tenderly and trustingly as I did as a child. I have no one left now but you. Why, why do you let yourself be controlled by that man? You don't understand him, Constantine. He has a wonderfully noble personality. Nevertheless, when he has been told that I wish to challenge him to a duel, his nobility does not prevent him from playing the coward. He is about to beat an enigmous game. What nonsense! I have asked you myself to go. A noble, personable, sorry, a noble personality indeed. Here we are almost quarreling over him, and he is probably in the garden laughing at us at this very moment. Or else enlightening Nina's mind and trying to persuade her into thinking he's a man of genius. You enjoy saying unpleasant things to me. I have the greatest respect for that man, and I must ask you not to speak ill of him in my I presence. have no respect for him at all! You want me to think of him as a genius as you do? I refuse to lie. His books make me sick. You envy him. There is nothing left for people with no talent and mighty pretensions to do but to criticize those who are really gifted. I hope you enjoy the consolation it brings. Those who are really gifted. Good. Indeed. I am cleverer than any of you. If it comes to that, you are the slaves of convention. You have seized the upper hand and now lay down as law everything that you do. All else you strangle and trample on. I refuse to accept your point of view, yours or his. I refuse. That is the talk of a decadent. Go back to your beloved stage and act at the miserable ditchwater plays you so much admire. I never acted in a play like that in my life. You couldn't write even the trashiest music hall farce, you idol, but for nothing! My dear red bag! Thank <laughs> you. 
pace again. Yes, brother. Be strong, Make your peace with him, too. Don't fight with him. You surely won't fight? I won't. But you must not insist on me, me seeing. Ah, I won't. But you must not insist on my seeing him again. Where I couldn't stand it. There he is. And I must be leaving. The doctor will attend to my wounds. Good. I think this is our best one yet. Yeah, that was a lot of the moments we've been talking about so far. You guys are doing a great job working those in and fine tuning those as we go. Really good job, guys. Um, thoughts? Fitz, second page. Uh, noble personality indeed. Here we are almost quarreling. You are quarreling. That almost doesn't make any sense because at this point you are already shouting at her. Mm. Project, yes, but so soften it a little okay. bit because you are already fighting okay. um, at that point. And I'd like to just to hold off that release of that actual fight, the blowout, just a little bit longer. We need to keep building it. So don't get quite so hot, quite so fast. Okay, got it. Um, and then at the end, I love, still love what you're doing. Um, with kind of jabbing at her with, oh, he is just. Nina in the garden. Um, but do remember, you still love Nina. So, yeah, man okay. of genius, the very end of that, get a little disgusted yeah. yourself. Okay. You start this as a jab at her, and then you remember that this is the woman yeah, you love, and you yeah. are disgusted yourself. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, let's try and work that in a little bit. Val, um, be stronger with your voice. Okay. I still, I see the struggle. But I think your vocal tone needs to match the struggle that, you, that we're seeing. It's still a bit too soft. So just be a little bit stronger. Um, you, you know, like, yeah, for example, just shortly after the same part, you envy him. There's nothing left. You're still being too motherly at this point. And again, it's just vocals that I'm hearing. It's just, you know, you envy him. There's nothing left for people. Be stronger. You envy him. There is nothing left for people who still get strong. Okay. Think of yourself almost like a queen, because you do in the play. You are royalty, and you speak to him like the royalty you are. And this is a good moment to show that. So just more strength, more regalness almost with your voice. You are commanding him. You are power in his life. That's why he's crawling to you, begging for you for affection, because you are that like royalty in his life that demands that kind of attention. Okay. You, know, you don't just hand it out. But just a little bit stronger with your vocals. Okay. Vince, um, right after that line for her, do, 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 do. You have seized the upper hand. You now lay down as law everything that you do. We're rushing this speech okay. a little bit. You're saying some heavy things to her right here. Slow it down a little bit. Let those sink into her and for us. Because we need to, this is a big confrontation between the two. The audience needs to hear every word of it. And that's just a little bit rushed. I would also like it when you say, all else you strangle and trample on. Those are very visual words. Oh, okay. I think he's choosing... I mean, in all things, poetry, you know, theater, the vocabulary is important. I'd like you to get a little graphic on that. So don't just breeze right through it. You visualize it on the front of her. Like, you're not going to be like, you yeah, strangle her. Yeah. But you know, like, I okay. want to see the visuals yeah. that, those are strong words. You strangle and trample on them. Okay. Don't brush past them. Got it. Um, I love the new way you guys did this walking over here when you cry. You have been kneeling next to him the whole time, and this time you got up. Because I've been having a hard time seeing your face and his. Somebody's seen that at some point. But when you stood up, you started on your knees, and you stood up, and you cradled him with your arm right there. The way you played into that mess was beautiful. It was very maternal. It was this gorgeous, vulnerable moment. We saw both of your faces. You still have the position of power because you are still standing over him, and you are still sitting. I really, really like that. So let's keep that with the arm, cradle around the face. And the way you delivered your lines into her arm, it was beautiful. I loved it. I made a specific note of that. Um, last note. Valerie, yeah. make your peace with him, too. Don't fight him. You surely won't fight. It's too much of a question right now. You're not asking him. You surely won't fight? It's not fighting. You surely won't fight. But you're a sentence. Don't fight. And you don't have to make it too much of a statement, but it was too much of a question. 
this time. You are actually asking him. Like, you surely won't, right? He doesn't get to make that decision. You are queen. You surely won't, right? Yes. Okay. A little stronger with it. All right, great. That was our best run yet. I love it, guys. Sweet. I love the moments that you are finding. <laughs> Okay, so let's take those notes from that last run and run it again, please. Please change my bandages for me, Mother. You do it so gently. Doctor is late. Yes, sir. He said he would be arriving at nine, and it's nearly noon. Sit down. You had a turban on. A stranger yesterday in the kitchen asked to what nationality you belong. <laughs> Your wound is almost healed. You won't be up to any more of these silly tricks, will you, my gun? No, Mother. I did that in a moment of insane despair when. I had lost all control over myself. It will never happen again. Your touch is golden. I remember when you were still acting at the State Theater, and I was still just a chap. One day in our court there was a fight. A poor Washerwoman was almost beaten to death. She was picked up unconscious, and you nursed her back to health. You bathed her kids in the wash bins. Do you remember that? Uh, no, not at all. Two ballet dancers lived in the same house. And they used to come and drink coffee with you. I remember that. Mm. They were very pious. I love you again, Mother. Just as tenderly and trustingly as I did as I was a, when I was a child. I have no one left me but now you. Let's take that back. Have no, it's okay. Over. Let's just take it back. Um, also, I feel like you're going into that a little too strong. It's okay. Almost childlike. I want to see more of the child in this Okay. Story. And is it, when, uh, when I say they were very pious, mm -hmm. that's, I'm still kind of like in that thinking about how she remembers that, but not, but not you know, how she's saying that to me. Mm -hmm. So that transition, I love you again, where's, where do you think that's coming from? Like, yeah. Just a little. I feel awkward just being like, I love you again, or am I trying to like, okay, I need to, I need to get it together. I need to, mm -hmm. I don't know. No, that's a good question and we're playing off of. I would say, take more of a pause for one. Okay. Because there's, right now we only have a short pause, so it does also prep it feels as quick as it looks, okay. watching it too, because like, wow, they're pious. And maybe you just don't hit it so hard. Maybe it's not so much like you're judging her as harshly at this moment, but more just like, yeah, but we're biased. Uh, just okay. remember that. Not like, ah, yeah, Less yeah. anger and more of just like, of course. Okay. Almost like you knew, of course. Yeah. That, that's why you were there. Yeah, you know that's yeah. what she's going okay. for. That's cool. You know? Yeah. Um, so that way that allows it to soften it a little bit more, and you can go into it. But again, this is a scene of just like, just fighting both of you against yourself for different things. So if there's a quick reaction, I don't think that's wrong, as long as it's honest. Okay. You have an honest train of thought within yourself to get there. Okay. I can't necessarily tell what your character is thinking in that, but yeah. that is a very good question um, okay. worth exploring for sure. Um, yeah, take a longer pause. Allow us to really think about this change that you're making. Yeah. Um, and just don't hit pious so hard. So okay. angrily, I should say. Yeah. Okay. You know, less anger at this point, because I don't, I don't think you should be exploding until why do you let yourself be controlled by that? Yeah, yeah. So it could almost be that pious is softer, you come, you're pleading with her, you're, this is a confession, of course, you know, you're confessing your love. You need to find out why this confession is so important to you in this moment. 
Why do you confess? You've hinted at it to this point, saying your touch is gold and all these things, but this is this is your moment mm. where you tell her, like, I'm like, I love you again, just like when I was a child. Find the reason for that confession, and maybe now don't give him much. Mm -hmm. Right now, you're you're earnestly looking into him, like receiving this. Like, oh, my son is saying all this. Maybe you don't give him a lot. Maybe just stay that harsh regalness, and that allows you to flip again into that anger. Why? Mm. You're here confessing your love to her. Like, you are my mother. Like, I love you as when I was a child. And again, even in the face of this confession, in the face of you trying to commit suicide, she still is fighting those maternal instincts. And yeah, you get time. Yeah. Because okay. the one thing that does stick around in this whole conversation is when you attack her lover. Yeah. Nothing that's happening. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. So let's try that, and if it doesn't cool. feel right, let's work it again. Okay. Yep. Two ballet dancers lived in the same house, and they used to come and drink coffee with you. I remember that. They were very pious. Mother, I love you again, as tenderly and trustingly as it was when I was a child. I have no one left, me but now you. Kind of like the arms. It's too friendly. Yeah. She's your mother. You adore her. All you want is her love. Okay. Oh, Do you want me to maybe react to his arms? No, I don't want him touching your shoulders okay. at all. No. It's too almost buddy. Yeah. Buddy. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Go for her hands. Try and kiss them again. Get on your hands and knees. Whatever feels right. But it needs to be more of a pleading. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> you can take it back a little more. Two ballet dancers used to live in the same house, and they used to come over and drink coffee with you. I remember that. They were very pious. Mother, I love you again, as tenderly and as trustingly as I did when I was a child. I have no one left to me but you. But why? Why do you let yourself be controlled by this man? You don't understand him, Constantine. He is a wonderfully noble man. Okay, pause. How did that feel? That felt a lot better. It looked a lot yeah. better. Yeah. It felt, I it love felt more uh, like from an honest place. Yeah. No, everything about that, the pauses were perfect. I like taking the hand. <laughs> Much better than the bloody arms. Yeah. Um, don't look away from him, though. Okay. You, when I say don't give him much, I mean don't look at him at all. Because why would he keep confessing his love? No. You guys are still connecting, but just don't let it emote on your face. If anything, maybe like, probably you don't like this. You don't like this emotional stuff with your son. Stiffen. That's what I'm for. I want you to get stiff when he does that. Okay. You don't like this. If he, you could even, if it feels right, kind of like, you know, patronizing the cat's hand that he's holding, pleading for you. Do something, but don't still look at him. Okay. Just take that a bit back again from them. Uh, they were pious. Much better on that delivery, too. Yeah. I love okay. that. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Two ballet dancers used to live in the same house. I mean, they used to come over and drink coffee with you. I remember that. They were very pious. Mother. Mother. I love you again. As tenderly and as trustingly as I did when I was a child. I have no one else but you. Why? Why do you let yourself be controlled by this man! You don't understand him, Constantine. He's stronger. He has a wonderfully noble personality. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, when he has been told that I wish to challenge him to a duel, his nobility does not prevent him from playing the coward. Walk away. He is about... He is about to beat an ignominious... Ah. <laughs> ignominious? Ignominious? He is about to be an ignominious retreat. What nonsense. I've asked him myself to go. Ooh, pause. Pause. Don't 
No please for that either. Okay. I have asked him myself to go. You're not leaving because you challenged him to a duel. He's not scared of you. He's going because I asked him to go. Yeah. He is about to beat an ignominious retreat. What nonsense. I have asked him myself to go. A noble personality. Indeed, here we are, almost quarreling over him, and he is probably in the garden laughing at us at this very moment. Or else enlightening Nina's mind and trying to persuade her into thinking him a man of genius. Mm -hmm. Feel it more. That grosses you out. You love me. Oh, yeah, yes, yes. Okay. Or else enlightening Nina's mind and trying to persuade her into thinking him a man of genius. You enjoy saying unpleasant things to me. I have the greatest respect for that man, and I must not let you speak to I him. have no respect for him at all. Pies. Val, how about instead of crossing to him again? Because there's a lot of and back and forth and back and forth right now, just to break it up a little bit. Okay. On that line, take it down. Take it down to us, and then cheat back to him. Okay. Now, I will not. Because there's, again, that position of regal authority. You don't have to get up in his face. You will command him from here. And that way, we're still getting a reaction, but we have a different action happening on stage. Okay, let's try that. Uh, where do you want to take it back to? Let's take it from what nonsense I've asked myself to go. Okay. Very good on that line. Hi, this is at the end of our rehearsal today for the scene between Arcana and Triplif. I feel really good about how it went. We found some solid emotional moments that kind of stood out and were able to workshop the tonality of the play a little bit in this scene. Uh, it was really, uh, felt really good about the way my actors interpreted it. They took notes well today and applied them fairly quickly. Obviously, there's still a lot of uh, more work that needs to be done. What I'd like to do from here on out as far as rehearsal wise would be to keep focusing. We seem to be losing a lot of the emotional intensity throughout the scene and only being able to go big and not being able to show that like quiet internal seething anger and it's getting kind of um, uh, expletive for lack of a better word so I'd like to go ahead and focus on internalizing some of the emotion a little bit um, it's getting almost comedic at times almost farcical with the way we're physicalizing our actions so there's definitely some ticks with the actors we need to work out some stomping a lot of exhaling that needs to be cut out um, aside from that uh, I'd like to keep exploring this arc with Arcana. I feel like the scene before, the scene we workshop today with Triplip, and the scene afterwards with Tregorn are one solid emotional arc for her. Um, all questioning her priorities as far as youth and her desire to be uh, immortalized basically forever as this icon of beauty and fame and talent. And it's kind of beautifully psychologically the way it's set up between her first being confronted by her brother, then being confronted by her son, and then being confronted by her lover. So all three main men in her life, um, exploring all three main relationships. Um, and so I'd like to go ahead and explore that and keep going, keep exploring that arc with her. What I'd like to do though is exclude Vince, our actor who played Treplift today, from that third moment with Tregoran because I don't want to be him to be overexposed to all the conversations I'm going to have with Valerie who played Arcadena today. I don't want his opinion and his, um, the way he's exploring his character right now of being this pleading, this childlike um, innocence about him because he doesn't know all the innermost thoughts of his mother. I don't want to expose that to him as the actor too soon because I don't want it to nuance his performance. So I'd like to start calling him into those scenes a little bit later on in the rehearsal process so he doesn't peek in his performance. Um, too soon. Aside from that, uh, I'm really excited with where my actors went with it today. They were good listeners, um, applied notes quickly and well, um, intelligent initial thoughts and interpretation, the natural blocking was pretty good. We just tweaked the little things here and there as far as staging goes. So from here on out, I think it's just kind of continuing to explore the arc that we have with our Arcadena. Um, and just uh, workshopping the emotional intensity and bringing it down to a more naturalistic level. But yeah, I feel good. Feel good about today. Thank you for watching.